You've jumped ships, you're now with us. It's great to have you along. What was it like being in the thick of things cricket-wise, let's start with that, in that series last year? I think it was a fabulous series. I think the, uh, the, the entertainment that was provided by both teams was uh, fabulous to see. And, you know, when you have a couple of test matches that get, you know, dragged to the fifth day and you have a result on the fifth day, it's, it's fabulous to see. Lords, Oval and England bouncing back at Leeds. It, it was a fabulous series. Unfortunate it couldn't be completed, mm -hmm. you know, for obvious reasons. You know, COVID is a thing that what it was eight months ago, the mindset of the players as opposed to the way they treat it now is chalk and cheese. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad to be here and I'm glad that the series will end here. We'll come back to events at Old Trafford. The aggression, though, that India showed under Virat Kohli's leadership. Can England now, with Stokes, McCullum, match that intensity? It's a different kind of aggression. It would have been lovely to see a Shastri and Kohli aggressive <laughs> after what they did in Australia and winning there, going 2-1 up against a McCullum and Stokes sort of basball aggression. So it's a different kind. I think if you asked me eight months ago, it was about England and fighting back, about the hostility at Lords and Kohli in that huddle saying, unleash hell and he would have got them revved up that would have been the focus for England I think now the focus is slightly different they're trying to continue what they did at New Zealand and this new form of cricket they're trying to play obviously they still want to level this series but they're trying to keep going in that sort of positive mindset and continue the good work from New Zealand series. Your point about where we've moved on in terms of Covid and the pandemic is very valid but there were 21 players on that trip to cover for these sort of eventualities and my understanding was none of the players tested positive. Was it the right thing to do to call that game off? See, at that time, it's, uh, it's very easy, you know, to jump the gun and say, you know, go out there and play. But there were a lot of players with young families. Uh, the word on COVID was not a 100% certain thing coming from anywhere. Anybody could have got it in the middle of a test match. You know, it's, uh, if someone would have got it in the middle of a test match, that would have been even worse. So as opposed to now, where that fear factor of getting COVID, you know, and then being isolated, that isn't the same. People know they have to get on with it. If mm. that mindset was there earlier, and it couldn't be there earlier, say eight months ago, because even the authorities didn't know whether they had the right to say that get on with it. You know, nothing's going to happen. It's just a flu. Today, people say it's just a flu. Get on with it. You know, no matter what happens. So they were justified at that moment of time to do what they did because of the mindsets. But today, if it happens, I think the game has to move on. Even then, I wasn't in the dressing room. But I tell you, I, I had half a mindset of probably thinking what you were thinking, of maybe get the reserves out there and finish the series. Yeah. But it was a tough one. It was a very tough call to take at that stage because had anyone tested positive during the test match, you know, there would have been big problems. Well, we are moving on now because Rohit's got it. Test match continues. Ben Folks has had it. Test match continues. But at that time, and you made the point very clearly when we were speaking that morning at Old Trafford, bubble life at the time, yeah. it was relentless. And England have made that point. That point wasn't just about the Indian team. It was about the England team and their backroom staff. And Joe Root's spoken about it. Every England player, Johnny Bairstow's been in and thanked the previous regime. All good with Basball. Everyone's loving it now. But he had a word to say about the previous regime. It was bubble life to bubble life to bubble life. India were off to IPL straight after that. There were players playing under pressure. They didn't know who who was spreading COVID to who. So I thought it was understandable. It was not right in as much as it had been perfect to finish that off. And I think it's played slightly, we shall see over the next five days, in England's favour. England now play much better cricket than they were there. India without Rohit, without Rahul, the two openers that were mm, brilliant, brilliant yeah. in that series. Kohli has moved on as captain, so Shastri has moved on as coach. So I think in England are definitely in a better place. But any 11 that India put on the park will be a very, very strong 11. Well, that's the key point. It's a very different looking lineup. It will be today, but the strengths are still there. What are the strengths in the 11 that we think will be picked for India? I think this game is between India's fast bowlers against England's top order. OK, clear cut game there, you know, because I think the intensity from the Indian attack will be more than New Zealand, mm -hmm. pace wise, aggression wise and bounce wise, you know, when it comes to uh, bowling at the top order of England. But the test for India will be their batting against uh, England's bowling. So it's going to be a great matchup. You know, India lacked the experience of a Rahul and uh, Rohit at the top. So important in England to have a settled opening pass, 
a pair that's done well in the past to again, you know, take center stage here. Unfortunately, that's not, that's not happening and that could be a problem.